Hi there. I've had a few of my YouTube friends and Facebook friends say that they like when I tell a story. Uh, this took place about 20 years ago when I was still working with Youth with um, Mission and I was still living here in, in Edmonton. And it was two days before Christmas and I was exhausted. I had just gotten off of work and I had a half a day to do all my Christmas shopping. So when I arrived home on the 23rd, I truly was wiped out. But I did everything that I needed to do, packed my suitcase, and I headed out the door in the afternoon of the 24th. When I arrived at the Greyhound station, it was packed to the gill. The bus was again completely packed, very noisy. Everybody was excited and all I wanted to do was sleep, but I didn't get any sleep. So by the time I arrived in Calgary, about a three and a half hour bus ride, I was really looking forward to be able to spend a little bit of time at my parents' place before we went on to the next event. But that wasn't gonna happen because my sister got stuck in traffic. By the time she picked me up, and by the time we arrived at my parents' place, all I had time for was to throw my suitcase in the guest room, run back downstairs, get into the car, and head off to church. And when we arrived at church, guess again, it was completely sold out, if you can put it that way. We had to wait for a while before the usher finally found us a seat. And although I was happy to see some f familiar f faces who were in the same boat that my f f family was in, uh, I was not really in the mood to being Miss Social Butterfly by that point. I just wanted to sit down. Finally, the usher found a seat for us, and it was in a little c c corner, perfect place for me to take a deep breath in and just enjoy the sound of the children's choir that was singing in the pre-service prayer time. and. They sang away in the manger, and I glanced up at the uh, little nativity scene that was perfectly put out there year after year. And I looked at that nativity scene, and all of a sudden I remembered that Christmas was all about him. I took another deep breath in and just enjoyed being quiet for a, for a wee bit. When we left the church, it was like a Hollywood movie. Snow was falling gently, but it was a heavy snow with beautiful white fluffy snowflakes. And it was, there was no wind at all. So it was just drifting down so beautifully with the backdrop of the um, street lamps um, going through the darkness. It was a magical moment. When we got home, we did what we usually did every Christmas Eve. My mom would turn off all the lights, light some candles, turn on the Christmas tree, and we just sat there. But it was just a quiet mo uh, place of peace. My mom would put on the, her favorite song, her favorite album, Mahalia Jackson, Go Tell It on the mountain, but I could not stop looking out the window. And I caught my sister looking out the window. We kind of looked at each other and we both said at the same time, let's go for a walk. And so we did. We bundled up in my, uh, in our coats and our mitts and our boots, like good C Canadians. We always have those handy wherever we go this, this time of year. And it, Again, when we walked out my parents' front door, that snow welcomed us. It wasn't a wet snow, so it was not hard to walk through at all. It was a joy to walk through it. And as we walked around the block, we became aware of something that not a lot of people who live in places that don't have snow would even know about. But there's a certain silence, a certain stillness that comes when you walk in that type of snowfall. 
I treasured that moment. And it's a good thing that it did because that's the last time I ever walked in snow just because I wanted to go for a walk in the snow. My disability had has progressed to the point now that walking on snow is not in the least bit enjoyable for, for me. It actually causes me a lot of anxiety. But you know, I can always go back and think of that moment of peace. But there's something that um, memory of a peaceful moment, no matter how special that is, it's not as special as this truth that I live with the Prince of Peace inside of my heart. He is, he goes wherever I go. If I walk into anxious situations and chaotic situations and where there's so much noise buzzing around me, whether it's in social media, whether it's in a crowded place, whatever it, it is, I carry the Prince of Peace inside of me wherever I, I go. I don't have to create my own peace. I don't have to strive to become peaceful because I lean into the Prince of Peace who dwells within me. And more importantly, I dwell within the Prince of Peace. Maybe you're thinking, I don't have a lot of peace in my life at all. I kind of envy that you've got that sort of peace. I want to in invite you into a little bit of a truth. If you listen to my last video, I talked about sin and how sin is different than a innocent mis mistake. Sin is when we deliberately do or say or think something against somebody else or even against our, ourselves uh, because for selfish motivation or because we think that it will get us uh, ahead in the world somehow. So we have all sinned. Every single person on the planet has sinned at one point or another in our lives. And therefore, we fall short of what God's original intention was God's greatest gift, his son, Jesus, paved the way for us to be reconciled to God and to have the eternal life. God loved us so much that even when we were in full rebellion against him, Jesus took the penalty for our sins upon him and take, took them to the cross. And then he rose and when he rose, he paved the way for us to live eternally with him. But we need to do our part by surrendering our lives to him. So how do you do that? You might be saying, it's quite simple. You admit that you sinned. You, you admit that you're, it's not working out for you right now. So you surrender yourself to Jesus and you make him Lord over your life, replacing your selfishness from being the Lord over your life. That's the simplest way I can explain it. So when we verbalize out loud, Jesus Christ is Lord from our hearts, we will be saved from the consequences of sin. For it is with your heart that you believe, but it's with your mouth that you declare your faith and your affections. And anybody who calls on the name of the Lord is saved. It's that simple. So if you're in that place right now, simply say something along these lines, Jesus, I've really messed up. I've got no peace in my heart. My life is chaotic and it's out of control. And I've done stuff deliberately that I'm not proud of. And I come to you and I surrender my life to you, Lord. And now I ask you 
to become Lord of my, my life. I give you the reins over my life. Thank you, Jesus. And then you can just sim- simply say, and say this out loud, Jesus, you are my Lord. And then accept his forgiveness for your sins. That's an important part. Accept his forgiveness for your sin and forgive yourself for your sin and give yourself a little bit of a break for the mistakes that you've made along the way. Once you declare your faith, you are saved. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord is saved. It's that simple. So if you pray that and you would like more information, you can contact me um, on Facebook. You can leave a note in the comment section, uh, and I would love to talk to you more.